Hi, it's Annalie again. This time I'm interviewing from the Einstein Tower in Potsdam, Germany. The Einstein Tower was supposed to test Einstein's uh, theory of general relativity by observing the sun. However, today I'm interviewing Christian Ott, a scientist who tries to test his theory not through the sun, but by another star, namely exploding stars. The Einstein Tower was a solar observatory built to test Einstein's theory. It was the first important building designed by the famous architect Eric Mendelssohn. With his unique design, Mendelssohn wanted to convey his excitement about Einstein's work. Albert Einstein himself chaired the inauguration of the Einstein Tower in December 1924. Um, do stars actually die and explode and form black holes? Yeah, they do. I work on supernovae, so they're uh, big stars, stars more massive than about 10 or 10, 15 times the mass of the sun as they, they burn their fuel very rapidly within a few million years and after that they, they go off and explode as a bright supernova. And astronomers can see these explosions happening? Yeah, in fact, um, ancient um, and medieval Chinese astronomers, for example, were exceptionally good at doing that. And for example, they observed and recorded the supernova that went off in 1054 in our galaxy and that made uh, the Crab Nebula that can still be observed today. Um, why is it so important that we understand these explosions? All life depends on supernovae because all elements that are heavier than hydrogen or helium were made in a supernova explosion or in the life of a star. And um, so it could be that a few supernovae that just went off before the solar system were formed um, made all the metals that are in, in the er on the Earth and that triggered the formation of the solar system. What exactly is a gravitational collapse? And do these collapses form black holes? So you have to think of a star as a giant sphere of gas. Mm -hmm. And that gravity wants to pull this in and make it collapse and compress. And there's thermonuclear fusion that powers stars, which is the making of heavier elements from lighter elements. Once iron has been made in the center of a star, making heavier elements would actually cost energy, wouldn't give you any energy. So at that point, the star cannot support itself against um, gravity anymore. So gravitational collapse sets in. And uh, that continues basically until the center of the star has reached uh, densities that are comparable to the densities in an atomic nucleus, which is about, let's see, a million billion times as dense as water. So that's what causes the black hole then? Well, it makes neutrons, first it makes a neutron star and then it can make a black hole, but okay. we don't understand yet exactly yeah. what, what happens. So we're currently uh, still working and I'm working on understanding what makes the actual supernova explosion. And if the supernova explodes in, energetically, then you have a neutron star at the, at the center. If the explosion doesn't happen for some reason, we have, you make a black hole because the, there's so much matter piling up on the neutron star that it goes to a black hole. Um, so can you see the collapse in the stars? We cannot easily look inside the star and see how it collapses. However, there are two messengers that could help us. Uh, one, one messenger is uh, neutrinos, which are tiny particles, elementary particles that are emitted as the star collapses. They're very hard to detect. The other messenger would be gravitational waves, which are one of the consequences of Einstein's general relativity, which haven't been detected yet. But we are optimistic that if a supernova in the galaxy goes off, we would actually be seeing gravitational waves, and they could also tell us something about the dynamics of the material that's, that's going on in deep inside the star. But what we actually do have to do is we have to simulate these explosions. How could you possibly simulate these explosions? Well, we do it with computers. Oh. We, we put the laws of physics into the computer, into computer language, and mm -hmm. basically uh, create virtual stars with, that resemble realistic stars, um, or real stars, to a to very good ex degree. Okay, and what kind of computers are needed for such? Well, we need, a, we need a true supercomputer. Yeah. So a computer that's about 5,000 times as fast as your standard PC at home. It's hard to believe these simulations are real just by talking about them. So now, we need to see them. It shows a rapidly rotating star that's about to collapse. And it's a density color map. We call it color, color coding color map. 
that shows uh, in blue relatively low densities, and as the collapse proceeds, it will go to high densities, which are marked red. Okay. So we're looking at this star as it goes to higher and higher densities, and you can see in the center there will, there will be a, a neutron star formed in just about a second. Right now we have the proto-neutron star in the center, and then there's you know, stuff moving out, and now we're changing the angle from which we are looking at the neutron star. And what you see below there in, in uh, red and, and green are outgoing gravitational waves that are emitted from the neutron star. How big was that star in relation to um, This is about the, the original stellar core, which is just the center of the star, was 3,000 kilometers. Oh, okay. And this is now about 30 kilometers. Wow. So it's okay. a factor of 100 yeah. uh, contraction. And we have cut out a slice so that we can look at the core of the star. And um, you have density shells, and they're again colored in such a way that we understand, see, uh, easily see hot regions. The movie will zoom in so that we can see what's happening deep inside the star. So there's stuff falling in, the, sh the core goes unstable, does these oscillations um, of the shock. Okay. And these oscillations make the center, the neutron star, oscillate too. And we'll see this in just a second when we zoom in further. Oh, there you see, yeah. it vibrates and it emits sound waves into the star. And these sound waves are, have the frequency of, of about 300 hertz, which is comparable to the D note, so the right. note D. Okay. And um, they emit so much energy that is deposited that um, we see that the star explodes, which mm -hmm. you can see here as the shock moves out and makes these, uh, right. these hot, hot colors. So uh, that is uh, our possible new way of blowing up stars with acoustic, acoustic waves, sound waves. Wow. Um, but unfortunately, so far, we haven't had confirmation from other groups. And since we're scientists, we can only you know, hope that this is true, but yeah. we don't know it until we have been confirmed by observations or by other simulations. So how would you be interested in simulations of these explosions? Were you first interested in computers or the physics? Well, both actually. My mom got me into computers when I was just four years old, and we had a computer, and my dad was an amateur astronomer, and still is an amateur astronomer, and we would you know, go out, gaze at the sky and the stars and the planets. So you could think that somehow my parents had this master plan of making a computational <laughs> astrophysicist out of me. I don't know. Maybe they had it. <laughs> um, and for these cluster computers, how did you get your hands on such massive computers. I had to go abroad, be, a, be an exchange student at the University of Arizona. And abroad, I, I, then I met Ed Seidel, who was a professor here at yeah. the Albert Einstein Institute. And he invited me to come join his group for, for doing my PhD. And that's how I got you know, connected to the Albert Einstein Institute and to the big supercomputers there. Um, are you expecting another supernova explosion in the near time future? Uh, I wish I, I, I could say when the next one would happen, but it's all statistical. But if one goes off, I would be very happy. I would get out the best bottle of champagne. <laughs> and then, you know, after a few days or so, maybe faster, I'd call up my friends and colleagues who are uh, observers and who are gravitational wave observers and ask them for their results. And then I would want to compare these results to my theoretical predictions for my simulations. And if you're right? Well, then I wait for the call from Stockholm, right? <laughs>